Welcome back to the Gridiron Expert. We're continuing our Big 12 football predictions today, and our next team went just 7-6 and six last year, but are looking to take major steps forward and potentially win their first Big 12 championship since 2009. They are the Texas Longhorns. Every year we hear that Texas is overrated and will be a major letdown when the season comes. And while that has been true in recent years, there is reason to believe that this year will be much more different for Tom Herman and this Longhorn squad. Last year could have been a huge breakthrough year for Herman in his first year with the Longhorns. They lost four games by five points or less. They ended up going 7-6 and six with a very dominant win over Missouri in the Texas Bowl. They lost by three points to USC on the road in overtime. Three points to Oklahoma State in overtime, five points to Oklahoma, and four points to Texas Tech in the season finale. So they very well could have had a 10 or 11 win season had they been able to pull out some of those close games, and they just weren't able to get the job done. But this year, it's a very experienced Longhorns team. Uh, Tom Herman has obviously built something. He did, he did a great job at Houston. He's doing the same thing here at Texas, and I think this is a team that really uh, could break through and reach the Big 12 championship game this year, despite what everybody else says about them being overrated or overhyped. Uh, they returned seven starters on the offensive side of the ball and seven starters on the defensive side of the ball. And at quarterback, uh, it's a bit of a, a bit of a battle going on, but both these quarterbacks played last year in Sam Ellinger and Shane Buchel. And, and so it's a bit of a quarterback controversy. Some people think it should just be one quarterback starting. Last year, they played uh, both at the same time. I know there were injuries that were involved in there as well. Uh, but both these quarterbacks were extremely solid. Tom Herman has options, whether he wants to start one or the other, or if he wants to use both. They're both solid dual threat quarterbacks at that. Uh, so Texas, regardless of who starts at quarterback, is going to be extremely solid there. I like Ellinger a little bit better uh, over Buchel, but uh, we'll just have to wait and see what Tom Herman has to say about that when the season comes. But regardless, they're going to be set at the quarterback position and going to get some Big 12 defenses, some fits this year. At running back, they have Keontae Ingram, a true freshman coming in, and Trey Wilson, the California transfer. So I think they're going to want to lean more on the pass this year than they are going to on the run. Uh, they still have some solid options at the running back position, and they return their two leading wide receivers from last year and little Jordan Humphrey and Colin Johnson. They also returned three offensive linemen. So that's a huge boost for Texas offense that was dangerous last year and will be even more dangerous this year. The defense, though, I think will be the strength for Tom Herman and this Texas team. Nine of their projected 11 starters are seniors. Think about that. The projected starters going into this season, they only have seven returning starters from last year, but nine of them uh, the projected starters are seniors. The two other ones are juniors. So the entire defense that is projected to start are upperclassmen going into this 2018 season. So a very experienced Texas defense. The linebacking core are going to be led by Gary Johnson and Anthony Wheeler. And the secondary are going to be extremely strong there as well uh, with P.J. Locke, Chris Boyd, and Brandon Jones. Of course, they lose their top two playmakers in Malik Jefferson and Deshaun Elliott, but still a Texas defense that will be extremely strong and could allow less points per game than they did last year. Last year, just allowing 21.2 points per game. So this is a very strong Texas team. And they open up the year against Maryland on the road, a major revenge game for the Longhorns. If you remember last year, uh, everybody was kind of overhyping Texas once again. They were number 23 in the nation to open the year uh, after going 5-7 and seven the year before. Uh, Tom Herman comes in. They lay an egg in Tom Herman's first game at Texas at home against Maryland, losing by 10 points to the Terrapins. This year, on the road at Maryland, I was very tempted to pick Maryland in this game once again. They're at home. If they can stay healthy, they have a solid dual threat quarterback, either in Casem Hill or Tyrell Pigrome. This offense is scary good for the Terrapins, but I think Texas is going to have revenge on their mind, and they know the type of defense that they can, or the type of team that they can have this year, uh, and they're not going to want to lay an egg like they did last year and start off on the wrong foot. And I think they go on the road and get a big-time win over Maryland. And then back at home, they beat Tulsa. I'm not too worried about that game. And then USC back at home as well. This is a this could be the revenge tour for Texas this season. Losing at home to Maryland last year. You, losing in double overtime to USC by three points last year on the road. This year they get USC back at home. And you know that the crowd uh, in Texas is going to be huge for this game. It's going to be an electric environment. Texas is going to be hyped to get a win over USC, uh, who you know kind of has been a bit of a rival in recent years. I mean, you, I mean, you go back to the Rose Bowl in 2005, uh, a thrilling game that was. Last year, a thrilling game. Uh, out there in California. And this year, uh, USC coming down uh, to Texas. And, and this is a USC team that loses Sam Darnold at the quarterback position, loses Ronald Jones at the running back position, and it's only the third week of the season. So if USC is having any trouble on the offensive side of the ball, they might not have had those uh, issues fixed 
uh, this early on in the season. I think Texas is going to be hyped for this game. I think the offense is going to be clicking. They almost won last year with, a, I think, a least experienced team or less experienced team they have this year, and that was against a better USC team last year as well. So I think all the signs, in my opinion, are pointing towards a Texas win over the Trojans. I'm going to give them one. Uh, against USC, and uh, I think that a lot of that contributes to USC's quarterback position, uh, the, the quarterback situation they have there. They have a solid defense, but I'm a little concerned about the quarterback uh, position right now. TCU back at home kicking off Big 12 play. A TCU team uh, that loses Kenny Hill at the quarterback position but has plenty of speed left. Darius Anderson at the running back position. Kevontae Turpin, of course, at the wide receiving position. And probably one of the better defenses in the Big 12, despite only returning six starters there. Gary Patterson, one heck of a head coach. Uh, took care of Texas last year, but this year I think Texas, with it being at home, gets the win over the Horn Frogs. I think they're going to have some issues this year. Not going to be poised for another, uh, you know, 11 win season, 10 win season, something like that. I think it's going to be a bit of a setback for the Horn Frogs. Texas get to win over them. On the road against Kansas State, though, this is where I think Texas hits their first roadblock against the Wildcats. Last year, you know, Texas won that game uh, in Texas 40-34 to in double overtime. So a very thrilling game uh, last year was a thrilling game the year before. Uh, but Kansas State has a solid one-two punch with Alex Delton at quarterback or Skylar Thompson, whoever it may be, and Alex Barnes at the running back position. And they only have five returning starters coming back on defense, but three of those five starters are in the secondary. So they might force Texas to win this game on the ground. I don't have faith in them winning this game on the ground. And it is on the road against uh, Kansas State here. Uh, always a very difficult place to play. And I want to give them a win over Texas. So that's going to be their first loss. But 4-1, still looking okay. And that's all right. That loss isn't going to mean too much because they're going to get a huge win over Oklahoma in Dallas in the Red River rivalry. And, you know, a lot of people will criticize me for this. I think Texas is by far Oklahoma's biggest threat in the Big 12 this season, without a doubt in my mind. The past two years against Oklahoma, Texas has lost by five points in each game, losing 45-40 to 40, uh, two years ago and 29-24 to 24 just last year. They're due for a win. I think it comes here. This, uh, Texas is going to be hyped for this game. They've been so close the past two years. I think they actually might be a little bit better than the Sooners this year, who obviously had to replace Baker Mayfield and replace some big-time playmakers on both sides of the ball. So I think they get a huge win over Oklahoma. They're going to be hyped for this game, especially after coming off a loss. A win over Baylor. We don't have to talk too much about that game. Uh, you know that uh, Matt Rule is going to be doing everything he can to get this Bears team uh, back to high standards, back to their winning ways after a disastrous year last year. Baylor will be much more competitive than they were last year when they went 1-11, but not enough to come on the road and defeat Texas. Then they get a big bye week going into the Oklahoma State game. The Cowboys also coming off a bye week coming into this game, and I actually am going to give Texas a loss here to Oklahoma State. This is one of those upset games, one of those upset picks in my opinion, that I can really see happening here. Oklahoma State, yes, loses Mason Rudolph at the quarterback position. Yes, loses James Washington at the wide receiver position. Those That huge one-two punch there for Oklahoma State. But still have plenty of talent on the offensive side of the ball and will probably even be better on the defensive side of the ball with seven returning starters there. They have a quarterback situation, whether it's going to be Drew Brown, the transfer from Hawaii, or Taylor Cornelius, a senior there. Uh, but by this point, uh, go, almost getting into November, I think they'll have that quarterback situation figured out. And so even though both, uh, both teams are going to be resting going into this game, but I think uh, high off of an Oklahoma win, the Baylor win, two wins in a row, Texas might be overlooking that West Virginia game who's going to be very dangerous. I think Oklahoma State gets a big-time win at home. And then West Virginia here back at Texas, a team that I've repeatedly said I'm extremely high on with Will Greer uh, and David Sills and Gary Jennings. I, I love the West Virginia offense and the defense. Uh, will be extremely improved, uh, as, as have not been in recent years. Uh, last year, Texas going on the road, beating West Virginia 28-14. to That was without Will Greer, though, in that game, also getting uh, Texas to six wins and clinching bowl eligibility. This year, back at Texas, assuming West Virginia stays healthy, this could be a very big shootout, uh, one that could affect the standings in a big way. But I do think Texas gets a win over the Mountaineers. I just don't. I think the Texas defense is going to be too much for this West Virginia offense. They're going to be able to shut down Greer uh, and get the job done against a very, very good West Virginia team. On the road against Texas Tech, another revenge game for Texas. Last year, losing at home to Texas Tech by four points. That game giving the Red Raiders bowl eligibility, practically saving Cliff Kingsbury's job. And uh, Texas just really blew that game last year uh, to the Red Raiders. This year, it's on the road. Texas Tech returns 10 starters on the defensive side of the ball. To put that with an always dominant offense under Cliff Kingsbury, a very dangerous Texas Tech team here. Uh, and even though it is on the road, though, I'm going to give Texas the win. I think the revenge factor comes into play. And even though the Texas 
Tech defense is going to be fairly solid. I think this Texas offense is just going to be too much for them. And then I don't know how many points Texas Tech will be able to put up against this Texas defense, who, like I said, is going to be very, very dominant as well. So I think a lot of factors contribute to this Texas Tech game that, in my opinion, point towards a Texas win. So a win over Cliff Kingsbury and his Red Raiders squad, and a win over Iowa State last year at Iowa State, a somewhat close game, I believe it was 17-7 to in favor of the Longhorns, an Iowa State team that no one can afford to overlook like they did last year, uh, last year going 8-5, and including a win in the Liberty Bowl, uh, Kyle Kempt and David Montgomery leading that offense, uh, this is a solid Iowa State team, but I just don't see them coming in to Texas and winning. I mean, they did, they did go into Oklahoma last year and win, so it is extremely possible that they could come in uh, to Texas and get a win. I just don't see that happening, especially with Texas in a prime position to close out the year strong and reach uh, potentially the Big 12 championship game. I think they get a solid win over a solid Iowa State team. And then on the road to Kansas, I'm going to mark that in as a win, but we all remember what happened two years ago. Uh, can, uh, Texas going on the road and losing to Kansas, and that was basically what got Charlie Strong out of a job. He was probably going to get fired anyways at the end of the season, but that pretty much sealed the deal for Strong in his tenure at Texas. So uh, I think they go on the road and defeat Kansas this year. I don't think it's much of a question. Texas is just too dominant on both sides of the ball. Kansas returns 19 starters, will be much more improved. Uh, David Beatty hopefully trying to keep his job there after only going 3-33 and over uh, three years there. I just don't see uh, any way Texas loses this game. And that's going to give the Longhorns a 10 and two record on the year, and could very well, depending on uh, how TCU, West Virginia, and Oklahoma do, get them into the Big 12 championship game. And it's very likely with that type of record that they could get there and win their first Big 12 championship game since 2009. This is a, a schedule that works out very well for Texas, getting a lot of the big games at home this year, uh, such as West Virginia and USC. Uh, you know, Oklahoma, of course, always being played in Dallas. They get TCU at home. Uh, I know some people could criticize me for the Oklahoma State loss. Maybe you swap that. Maybe they lose to Oklahoma and they beat Oklahoma State. I don't know. But uh, I do think Texas is in for about a 10-2 season this year. And like I said, despite everybody saying they're overhyped, this is a different Texas team than we've seen in the past. They're under new management. Tom Herman, one heck of a head coach. He's got one heck of a team. Tons of talent on both sides of the ball. And I truly believe that Texas will surprise a lot of people nationally and in the Big 12 and could potentially be a major contender in the Big 12 and win the Big 12 title for the first time since 2009. So as always, please go check us out on Twitter at Gridiron Expert, on Instagram at The Gridiron Expert, and always here on YouTube. Please continue to like, comment, and subscribe, and we will see you next time on The Gridiron Expert.